It is just as loud here at Coleman Coliseum tonight. Always you love games that have a ladder on standby. That's right. Auburn controls the tip. Tigers coming off of a blowout loss on the road at Rupp Arena in Kentucky. Dropped it 86 to 54. Bruce Pearl said the guys weren't playing together. We weren't playing for each other. We got to help each other out. And that goes on both ends of the floor. Now they got overwhelmed in that second half physically by Kentucky. An early three. That's not their game, but Jalen Williams throws it down. Now only making six per game in conference play is Auburn at 30% to your point. Same starting five for Alabama over about the last 20 games. That's when freshman Jaden Bradley moved into the starting lineup at the point guard position. The most scrutinized player in all of sports today is Brandon Miller, number 24 in Crimson. He leads the SEC in scoring. He's looking to become just the fourth player in the last 50 years to do that as a freshman. And he's coming off, Jimmy, two monster games. Yeah, he is seeing a really good rim right now. But in this first matchup, he was 0 for 7 from the three-point line. Flanagan, the primary defender on him, is Auburn falls asleep on baseline out of bounds under. And Brandon Miller was a force at the rim in the first matchup. Auburn's defense left a little something to be desired against Kentucky. The catch shot 56% from the floor and 62% from three. They got dominated on the glass. Just about everything went wrong last time out for Auburn. They're trying to get right tonight. And Janai Broom turns it over as Betty Ako gets the steal. Tough to get right against the number one national seed and a foul by Jalen Williams. Tremendous rim runner is Charles Bediaco. Defense to offense. Offense to defense. This kid runs with passion both directions. What does Bruce Pearl's team need to do to pull off the upset tonight? That they have to be physical with Alabama. And Auburn is not the most physical team. But teams that have bothered Alabama have been physical, body-to-body -body blow games. And I think you've got to get on the offensive glass if you're Auburn in this ball game, Tom. And certainly your get-back defense has to get back quickly, especially after those live ball turnovers. And those are the three keys that Bruce talked to his guys about today. And can you check all three for the next two hours to be determined? Betty Atko, just a 38% clip from the free throw line on the season. And he misses them both. Auburn was tight with Alabama in their game at Neville Arena earlier this season. Same day college game day was there. But like many of their road games especially, Auburn fell apart late. Seven single-digit losses on the season for this Auburn team. and th They seemed fatigue in the loss at Kentucky. They did for the first time. and They've had a very difficult stretch of Saturdays. And not answered the bell in the win column yet tie up and this will be Alabama basketball on the jump ball pardon me Auburn basketball and Nate Oates has a defensive club that is just a nightmare to play against especially in league play they lead the league in their three point percentage defense only allowing 24% that's not Auburn's strength but Auburn's got to make a handful, five or six, to stay in this game. Not easy to do against that overall length of Alabama. 341st in the nation from three. Wendell Green Jr. had a great game here against Alabama last year. They switch out on Broome. Green with eight on the shot clock. It's by Miller, but can't get it. Broome's tip doesn't go. And it will stay with Auburn with a fresh 30. Tom, it looks early that Alabama is going to completely cover up Wendell Green and not let him get off threes. If he can finish at the rim, so be it. And that's not Wendell Green's strength. Jalen Williams makes his second three of this game. I think, can they get to eight? It feels like a game on the road for Auburn. Can they get to eight made threes? A couple of three above their average. An average, yes, yeah, six made per game. Alabama on the other side lives by the three in the transition. They make ten threes a game. They shoot more than anybody in the SEC in an illegal screen. And that's charged to Brandon Miller. And Nate Oates' defense will have intense pressure on Wendell Green. 
for Auburn. The reason why Wendell Green is averaging 23 points a game in his career against Alabama. Make someone else beat you tonight if you're Nate Oates' roll tide squad. Williams lost it on the drive. Home crowd saw it a different way, and Chuck Jones might correct his partner. Don Daly and Chuck Jones changed the call. Bruce Pearl surprised there wasn't a foul called on this drive. And he may have a case or two. Yeah, that's a reach in by Clowney and Miller both. Four twenty win seasons for Bruce Pearl looking for his fifth with a victory here tonight. How about the hire of Bruce Pearl and Nate Oates to elevate this rivalry that's already red hot in this state over the last few years and has gone to a whole nother level. The intensity, the fight, the pride, the passion. Bruce has gotten his team to a final four. Nate Oates looks like he has a team this year that can get there as well. Alabama has never been there. Bruce Pearl is red hot right now. For a lot of reasons, not the least of which is that was the second on Jalen Williams, and he has to sit now. And he didn't get the call on the other end. Now that's a big foul because yep. Jalen Williams is capable of getting 20 points in this game. He's had 21 in league play once. And he's that second, third score to go along with Window Green if Green gets covered up. He had 16 in the previous matchup with Alabama. Chris Moore enters. Dylan Cardwell is also on the floor. Katie Johnson now. Bruce Pearl, like a line change, getting a bunch of new guys in. And what are they looking at here? I'm sure the clock is right. That inbound pass was deflected by Cardwell. Yeah, time has to come off. Auburn's still the best in this league at taking away your baseline out-of-bounds plays. They, they, they gave up one early, but, man, did they smother you right here and make life tough. Katie Johnson knocks it out-of-bounds. He, he can be a wild card but also wildly inconsistent. Yeah, absolutely, he can. Three straight games that this kid's been in single-figure scoring. Six points, four points, seven. But he's capable of busting up 14, 15-point game himself again. So difficult right now just to get the ball in in that dead corner. He had a sensational year last year. Auburn won the SEC. Alabama has already clinched at least a share of it this year. Basketball taking over the Yellowhammer State. And Johnson with the steal. Wendell Green Jr. thought about stepping into a three. May have gotten away with one. And now Moore loses it. Sloppy play early for Auburn. And Miller waits in the corner. They got the six-foot Katie Johnson on him. Here's Clowney for three. Cardwell got it. Wendell Green Jr. paces Auburn with 14 points a game. Flanagan behind Cardwell for the long two. And a foul on Cardwell inside. It's his first. Auburn with an early advantage, 6-2 to two in his rivalry matchup. I have was called to his attention, and Nate said, it's on me, and I, sh I should have seen this way before Saturday, and that's not what Alabama basketball wants to look like. And Brandon Miller learned a lesson, adjust his pregame ritual. And man, is he talented though with that basketball in his hands. Missed the first two. So his first two shots, he's trying to join Cam Thomas from LSU, Chris Jackson from LSU, and Bernard King, who's been the only freshman in the last 50 years to lead the SEC in school. That, that amazed both of us. That this is that short. Hard, Hard to do in this league. Indeed. This is one of the best defensive leagues in basketball this year. Dylan Cardwell commits the foul. Now both he and Jalen Williams have committed too. Now Brandon Miller makes three threes a game. One of the reasons he's on this list. Camp Thomas shot it every time he got up LSU. Chris Jackson was a distributor as well as a scorer in the late 80s. And Brent Bernard King. Scored 26 a game. And Chris Jackson putting 30 up as a freshman in this league. So hard to get to the rim against Alabama. Not only are they in good position, but they're long, they're quick. Recovery to the spots, do that last charge. 
You cannot allow Alabama to run down those long rebounds off threes. Miller tried the crossover on Chris Moore. Bama just one for five from the floor. Miller stepped back. And he is 0 for 3 to start this game. Now, Auburn doing a good job of keeping pressure on Miller, not letting him get in a comfortable catch and release spot. Wendell Green got fouled. And that's the second of Brandon Miller. He beat Miller off the bounce to get a half step on him and two shots coming for Green. But I love, I love that aggressive push by Wendell Green. That's different than the half court. You got a numbered situation and guys backpedaling. And Wendell Green is going to seek that rim as, as fast as any guard in this league. Rim to rim with the ball. Wendell Green Jr. Draws more than six fouls per 40 minutes. It's one of the best rates in the SEC. Had 24 in the first matchup, and that included four threes. The old Berman checks in for Auburn. And Janai Broom on the floor for the first time since the opening minutes. Green fifth in the league, 82% for the line. Meanwhile, Alabama's missed its last five attempts and in that span has turned it over three times. An early three in the shot clock. It's way off the mark from Ryland Griffin. Not surprised Griffin with a quick quick release because he had 16 points in the first matchup between these teams. Broom's able to convert. I, I again, really impressed by the aggressive conversion offense by Auburn early, Tom. And they're running that thing right up the backside of Alabama, making them pay for a little bit slow in their recovery Clowney yeah, good. how good is that that was a very crowded middle floor that he rolled out of a dynamic roll through contact impressive for a kid that young Clowney coming off of a double double 10 and 13 and they went on Saturday against Arkansas Katie Johnson in the paint no numbers for Alabama the transition offense was the worst it's been all year in the game against Arkansas. Quinterly gets him back on track. And it's now a one possession game. Alabama runs to those four spots. The two high guard spots, the two deep corners. Put a tremendous amount of pressure on you early in the shot clock. Denied by Clowney. Chance to run for Bama. And Wendell Green takes it away. Six turnovers in transition Saturday against Arkansas. They scored just 0. .56 points per possession. Nato said, ideally, you got to be up around 1.3 points per opportunity. Green with the head fake. And it's stolen by Quinterly. The veteran in the open floor draws a foul on Berman. There's that rim decision by Wendell Green. He's going to be challenged with all night. That time they just ate him up. I love that middle screen ball out of Clowney through contact. Got his eyes on the pass early and touched the paint, kick out threes. Nate Oates' guys will take every single one of those they can in the game. Mark Quinterly had a great game against Arkansas, one of his better of the year, seven assists and 16 points. Trying to shake Broom. Here's Lamar Burnett. And Alabama's individual struggles from three continue. Burnett has missed his last 11 attempts from deep over the last three plus games. Johnson, whoa, somehow got it in. That was a bad angle, but a good shot. Well, he's a bigger physical version of Wendell Green when he's driving the ball to the rim. He can take a hit and still elevate with some length where Wendell Green gets covered up with size. Not as big as he used to be, KD shed 15 pounds in the offseason. Quinterly challenged the best shot blocking team in the league, but then Berman had it knocked away by his own teammate. Burnett reverses it in. Good player, really good defender, and a multiple level score. He can knock down the three ball in at 35% range. 
but very controlled off of the bounce. Impressive to me about Burnett. Denied. Chance to run. Taken back by Jalen Williams. Numbers on the other side. KD Johnson. Got it! He is the wild card in this game and every game for Auburn. When he's on, he's on. When he's off, he's off. So far, zero in white is on. There are very few brave souls in orange scattered throughout this building. They had something to cheer about. And they've had a lot to cheer about with Auburn looking for a major upset up six on the road. As expected, we are seeing an early desperate effort out of Auburn on both ends. Drive the ball with force and purpose. Active hands defensively. And Auburn so far, multiple guys switching out on him, making life difficult early. The leading scorer in this league. And the leading freshman score in the game, guarded by the six-foot Johnson again. And he gives it up. Such a comforting feeling, though, for Nate Oates. At the opening tip, you know every game, you've got the best player in the gym. And it's Brandon Miller. Sears with the left, and Clowney finds the rebound. It, it's something that Bruce Pearl was able to say last year with Jabari Smith. Absolutely it was. And that is a... Huge, huge confidence boost to you as a coach and to your players. And you know you got the guy. Brandon Miller took over the South Carolina game late. They won it in overtime. He finished with 41 points. Mid-range from Janai Boom, who did not have a great game last time these teams met. He went this three for 11 from the floor. Miller handled by Trey Donaldson and a steal after Boom jumped out on him. Rome showing a propensity to shoot the three. Three consecutive games, he's put up at least one. And Tom Broom was so quick and got so low for a 6'10 kid as that second ball screen defender. He just rips the ball from Miller. And he lost it. Sears on the other side, shared all the way to Dom Welch. Ball fake to get in the lane. And another miss for Bama. Vincent Ty just 33% from the floor early. Plan again was out of control and whistled for the offensive foul. Yes, he was out of control. I'm going to go back to the ball screen defense by Auburn. Watch Janai Broom right here. Donaldson's going to force him to the side, knowing that Broom's going to jump out. And really good active hands. Not easy to get a rip against Miller. He's always so tight with the ball for a kid 6'9". Miller with a hot low hand with the steal. And Miller has not had very many bad games this season. And he, even when he didn't shoot the ball well in December against Houston, he was fantastic from the free throw line. Boom. Offensive foul on Bediaco. Back to back star defensive plays by Janai Broom. And he didn't win the foot race to the loose ball, but just a harassing defender. Got under the skin of Betty Ako. What's an eye broom right here? He gets the deflection. A foot race to the ball. Betty Ako wins the initial race. The broom doesn't let off the pressure. And Betty Ako with a little bit of clear out of the arm. It's an Auburn team that already has two of its bigs in foul trouble. The broom staying aggressive. Dalen Williams has hit a couple of threes here early. Now Flanagan leans in. And Brandon Miller secures the rebound. He'll take off with it. And he got tripped up at midcourt. Pick the Tiger. It's on Flanagan. And that is his second. This is an Auburn team that has been on the right side of the bubble most of the season. Thanks in large part to a great start at 8-0. Their best wins coming against Northwestern, Arkansas, and Missouri. But they've lost five out of seven. And they've got Tennessee coming to town to close the regular season. Tom, Auburn outplayed Alabama in the first matchup for 26, 27 minutes. And Bruce told his guys today at the end of the shoot-around, he reminded them of that. And he said, the challenge tonight is to play them, outplay them again for 30, 31 minutes. And let's see where we are with four to go. Man, I've always said in March, desperate teams are so dangerous. And that's exactly what Alabama is up against tonight. 
Alabama had its second best shooting out of the season against Alabama. Shot 59 percent. Only behind the clip that they had against Georgia, what was a 49-point blowout. Katie Johnson got it back. And they're going to get Betty Ockel for his second. And Katie Johnson has been the fastest, most explosive guy on the floor so far. And he just got another speed tonight that no one else, including his own teammates, can match. Like I said, Tom, when he's on and he's in the right groove, very disruptive on the defensive end. Is such an explosive guy, man, with and without the ball as a cutter and a downhill driver. Started his career playing for Tom Crean at Georgia, and in his Georgia debut, poured in 21 points. The only other freshman to have a debut like that, a guy by the name of Anthony Edwards, and another guy named Dominic Wilkins. Pretty good company, huh? Yep. Yeah. If hoops is your thing. <laughs> Six early on for KD Johnson. Dalen Bradley with the blow by of Donaldson. Clowney foul. And that'll be charged to Chris Moore. Thursday, college hoops triple header coming your way. Both top 10 and bubble teams. First, Michigan and Illinois go at 7 Eastern. Then, fourth ranked UCLA, home against Arizona State. Followed by eighth ranked Arizona. Going to LA to take on USC. All three games on ESPN and the app. UCLA won the Pac 12 regular season title with a win against Colorado on Sunday. Tommy Hawkins Jr. had 17 for the Bruins. I was asked earlier today on the radio show who's the best team I've seen and I said well Alabama obviously in the SEC but that Arizona club I had the game back late November Tennessee at Arizona a Arizona they were a special team that night I know they've hit a little bit of a skid and Zulus Tabellas had a rough patch but I really trust that Arizona team in the NCAA tournament they've got that high low game that's very difficult to defend hard to match just keep an eye on the Wildcats. Williams with the quick release. Bruce Pearl has ran his flex cut on that baseline five, six times already in this game. And they get a basket out of it. It is a staple. Follow jam wasn't there, and Auburn's got the rebound. That flex offense he picked up working for Dr. Tom Davis yeah. back in the day. Eddie Johnson behind Broom screen got another. Yeah. Here's what I love about that. You made Alabama's Brandon Miller cover a ball screen. And that's an area right now that he gets clipped off a lot, man. He he shrinks on those screens as opposed to fighting over. Bradley finds Welch in the corner. Auburn up a touchdown here with seven and a half minutes to play in the first half. Mm, I see where you are. Who does Bruce Pearl want to drag into that ball screen? Again, he's got Brandon Miller involved in it. A late switch, and <laughs> man, yeah, Trey Donaldson makes him pay. Largest yeah. lead of the game for Auburn. What a start for Bruce Pearl's team. They're currently on a 7 nothing run. Bruce Pearl has seen what I've seen. You can go at Brandon Miller in ball screen defense. Watch Brandon for two. Auburn's sitting at 37, and Timmy, a fantastic opportunity to get eight teams in. Well, there's eight in the top 50 of the net, which is fantastic for any league. And the SEC is right there with the best of them in the country right now. Four of the top 10 defenses right now are out of the SEC. Alabama is one of them. Lamar Burnett with the three. That's the second make from deep for this Alabama team. It's against Arkansas. Started, started just one for 20 from three. And a huge answer by Trey Donaldson. Tom, the depth of Alabama is real. They don't put a poor defender on the floor. And they seldom put a non-scoring threat on the floor. Burnett, Quinterly, two former McDonald's All-Americans come off the bench. Not as good a depth as you can ask for in college ball. Quinterly behind the screen. Way short. You said the magic number for Auburn may be six. They've already made five threes. Meanwhile, Alabama just two of nine from deep. And Alabama comes in averaging 10 three-point makes per game. 
Auburn saying you're going to have to do something else tonight besides knock down the three so far. It's been rare that Auburn has found a top five or top two road win. You have to go back to 1988 against Kentucky. And a foul by Noah Clowney is his first. That's good late clock offense by Auburn right there. But look at Donaldson again. Just the confidence to step back and gather himself. A stud as a high school football player. And Bruce Pearl right now is calling a really good game. And we, we probably don't talk about that near enough. Head coaches have to have good games as play callers. And Bruce Pearl, his last action right there, Tom, that late clock, a go screen into a ball screen, got his guy downhill into a post pass, really well done. Could not shoot the ball well in the second half against Bama and Neville Arena. What a change from 2 for 11 to 5 for the first six. Chris Moore makes one of two. We have seen Brandon Miller struggle before in a half and get 14 or 16 in the second half. Not on the floor now. The offense has to come from other guys that are not your typical primary score. Quinterly through the foul at Cardwell in the third on Auburn's reserve five man. Big fan of Javon Quinterly. I know you are as well. This is a kid that was a McDonald's All-American. Was the SEC Tournament MVP a couple of years ago. And I talked to him today for about 15 minutes. We sat down. I just said, I wanted to just learn from you a little bit about leadership. And when things don't go your way and you're no longer a starter. And he talked about being a mentor to those new guards. Accepting his role. Starring in his role. What he learned from... The culture of Villanova and what he learned from guys like Herb Jones once he got here. Not a selfish bone in this kid's body. Very impressed with how he has handled coming off the bench all year long. 27 starts last year. In his final, March 18th in the NCAA tournament against Notre Dame when he tore his ACL. Nate Oates said, we weren't sure if he was going to come back. We weren't sure if he was going to be healthy. There are a lot of question marks getting him to this point of the season. And man, has he responded. You'd be hard to find a better backup point guard off the bench in college basketball this year. I don't think there is one. He's all over Donaldson, who's waiting for the play from Pearl. And they'll start it with 11 on the shot clock. Donaldson trying to find some space. Wow. Tough shot! That's pretty simple offense. Keeping the ball in the middle third of the floor. A little bit of ghost screen action to some confusion for Alabama, allowing guards to continue to get downhill into tough two. Finger roll on the other side, Quinterly. He is still so talented and so so soft with his finish off those explosive guards. Donaldson back out. Another Jalen Williams three. Quinterly, 24 years old, on a team that gets 52% of its points from freshmen. He's been the steadying force tonight. Miller back in. Lendell Green Jr. back in. And Brandon Miller off to a slow start. Yeah, has not found his rhythm. And uh, Auburn, when he puts the ball on the, on the deck, uh, Auburn is eating him up. They're sending that second and third jersey, making it a contact play, which Brandon Miller has gotten better at the last month or so but still not his overall strength turn this game into a physical game for Brandon Miller to have to deal with over for three three boards started now by Moore Quinterly with the lob and a finish by Clowney he doesn't look like a guy off the bench wow can he read that middle ball screen and find the dunker spot to perfection. Rome, challenged by Miller. Alabama basketball.
Students were lined up at dawn to get the best seats here at Coleman Coliseum. But they've seen their team trail for the majority of this first half. Nearly thrown away. Quinterly is able to find it. 15 on the shot clock. Bradley, offensive foul on the freshman. That's a really good call, a hard call. That's a good call. Legal guarding position. That defender can keep moving. Watch the ball screen right here. Mike Quinterly to Tennessee, but I think the entire SEC family understands when a guy goes down like that, how much he puts into the game of basketball and how that will affect Tennessee going forward. They will be bigger on the perimeter overall. They handled it last night for the 37 minutes without Zakai Ziegler, but and prayers up to one of my favorite dudes in this league, Double Z, to have a successful recovery and look forward to seeing him back again soon. Auburn has made five of its last seven shots from the floor. Here's Jalen Williams off the curl and make it six out of eight. Win the pause, the game paused, a timeout. Win coming out of the pause, get Williams with a curl to his right shoulder, left paw. Again, Bruce Pearl now, he's calling a terrific game as a head coach play call. I thought he meant pause like the puppy pause we saw a moment ago, dunking yeah, the basketball yeah. midfield. I know our guys at halftime are going to be outstanding. They're not going to trump Scooby. <laughs> Scooby's at halftime here. I'm locked in. I'm not going anywhere but right here watching Scooby at halftime. I hope they bring Scrappy Do out too. Auburn with <laughs> an eight point lead. What an effort by Auburn, right? You come in reeling five out of your last seven. You've come up short. Your in-state rival, the number one team in the country in terms of CD for that NCAA tournament. Only one road win against an AP top five team. That came with a great Sonny Smith coaching Auburn on the road at Rupp Arena. On a night that Matt Geiger had eight. John Kaler was their leading scorer. And Knocked off Eddie Sutton's Kentucky team that had Rex Chapman and Winston Bennett on. And Jimmy Dykes on the bench as the assistant coach. Probably factored into you, that loss. I bet you had to scout that Probably night. factored into the loss. Alan Flanagan has to make five 15-foot pull-up shots in this game. 22 in white. I, I think that's a magic number. Because in that drop coverage for Alabama, your big guards are going to be able to come down Hill Tom, curl into some 12, 15-foot jump shots, he just stuck one. If he gets to five in this game, I think Auburn walks out of here with a win. Tigers with their largest lead have a chance to extend it. Wendell Green Jr. And the 5'11 junior from Detroit's got another one coming. Played it. Famous country day in Detroit. Then Lolly Muir in Indiana before starting his college career at Eastern Kentucky. Tom, this time of the year, you, you can play desperate or you can play desperate and great. There's a difference. There's one thing to play desperate and have energy and fly around with your hair on fire and all that, turn the ball over, take crazy shots, or you can play desperate and play really well. Auburn so far is the second option. After the game against Kentucky, Bruce Pearl said, if you're going to play in a hostile environment, you've got to trust your teammates. We didn't. They lost that game 86-54, to 54, much different result through the first half here. Here's Brandon Miller. And he got a three-point chance. That's where his game has grown now. NBA scouts were asking me in November, December, is he tough enough to make tough twos through contact? I said, not yet. And man, you're starting to see it because Auburn just not letting him squeeze off a three, forcing him to do something off the bounce. He backs up to get speed going downhill, takes a hard hit by Broom in the finish. Such a hard cover. 24 in red. Bam. There's the contact. Chin locked in. Eyes stare down the finish. Natural born score. Second best free throw shooter in the league at 84%. Didn't get his first point to the 909 mark. First field goal just a moment ago. Bruce has kept his offense simple. Not getting to that fifth or sixth pass. Doesn't want Alabama's length to run through passes. A high risk pass there that. Almost went the other direction. I think that was like pass interference. Sears had yeah. his arm on the back of the intended receiver. It wasn't the denial. It was the off arm. And Auburn in the bonus. They know it's channeling his Whip Sanderson with the plaid tonight. 14-0 and 0 at home is Alabama this year. They're winning by an average of 26 points. That's how dominant 
his club has been inside Coleman Coliseum. Lanigan misses the front end, and it's hyper hopping Nick Pringle with the rebound. This dude can rise. Hyper hopping. Love the description. Pringle is waiting in the dunker spot. They don't run a lot of plays for the bigs, but they get a lot of points. Broom with the rebound. Whoa, whoa, whoa what are we doing? Slow down. Whoa. Speaking of NBA passes, we got NBA action Friday night on ESPN in the app, starting with Jason Tatum and the Celtics hosting the Nets at 7.30. And off to the Mile High City for the Grizzlies and Nuggets, the top teams in the Western Conference. Our coverage sets with NBA countdown 7 Eastern on ESPN and the app. Joker had his 100th career triple-double in the Nuggets' win over the Rockets Tuesday. He's got 24 triple-doubles this season. Wow. Celtics have been on the slide similar to Auburn. The Bucks have overtaken him, right? You see the intensity in this arena is at a high level. And forget about this is a bitter, bitter in-state rivalry. Now in the game of basketball, uh-oh, well, uh that's trouble. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's way too easy, man. You let him slip three. 60% or higher, I think, Tom, right now on a catch-and-shoot unguarded three. It is automatic. Katie Johnson mid-range. Moore found the rebound. And then he snuck along the back line but couldn't finish. Broom's tip is good. The activity level by Broom has been exceptional, like a 10 out of 10 for a big guy. Bruce Pearl's going to take the time out to talk about his defense. Doesn't want Alabama to get on that last-minute run to close out this first half. What a game. Intensity. In an odd way, is that an advantage for Auburn to be facing the number two team in the country to be their rival and not just some random team? I think it is. Right now, Auburn needs to be clicking on all cylinders and red hot because of where they are right now in that projected bracket. And you want all the juice you can muster up to get your guys ready to go. Remember, Auburn came off of an, an overwhelming Kentucky defeat. Beat them down in the second 20 minutes. I was interested to see how they would respond and you're not ready for your in-state rivalry and a chance to solidify your chance in that NCAA tournament. It's a swing and a miss. Savon Quinterly at the free throw line after the foul on Johnson and Bruce Pearl talked about the fact that they can't play like that, especially from a physical standpoint, expect to win. He said we gets Ole Miss. You see, we rebound like we did tonight. We get beat by 40. And then <laughs> Kentucky goes, well, I guess I was off by eight points. I hate it when I'm right. Got out-rebounded 41-23 to 23 mm. against Kentucky. Prophetic. And you don't want to be prophetic. Auburn is plus three on the glass so far tonight. First half coming to a close in this bitter rivalry. They are on their feet at Coma Coliseum. Katie Johnson. And it's off of Broome. Go back to Bama. You mentioned a late run. Yeah. This is a game that Auburn at one point led by 12. And Chris Moore checks in defensively to get on Brandon Miller. Chris Moore is talking to Brandon Miller on every possession right now defensively. Five checking 24 in red. Bruce Pearl says, if someone's going to make a shot in this last 49 seconds, it better not be Brandon Miller. And Chris Moore says, Coach, I hear you. Miller sets the screen. This is Mark Sears with a deep three. Rebound off the back row. Broom has it. Kicks it to Donaldson. Good physical check out by Moore on Brandon Miller, who's trying to get to the offensive glass. That's money. Furman from that the is, corner. I'm just telling you, that kid does not miss. From that corner over there, he may miss something from the other corner. He's not going to miss from that far corner. And his happy spot. Furman, a regular now after not playing early on. Shot clock, or pardon me, the game clock's at five here at the end of the half. Sears on Moore. Sneaks in. What a take by an older guard. 
Didn't risk the pass. Kept the ball in the middle, Tom. Take away the help and just fought for a tough two. Speaking of fighting, what a first half between these rivals. Auburn is 14-1 with a halftime lead. They're looking for a major upset on the road against number two. Our score at the break. Auburn up 40-33. to Back to Kevin Connors in the game. If they're still going to win the ball game, go back to Auburn. I don't know if that shot shooting is going to continue. What Auburn has to do now is drive the ball, establish something on the inside, don't rely completely on that three ball in the second 20 minutes. There have only been eight number one teams in the country over the last two years. Both of these programs have reached that ranking. Auburn last year, Bama this year for just the second time ever. And Mark Sears starts with a triple. Alabama can miss seven or eight threes in a row. Does not affect the green light, does not affect the confidence that they shoot it with. Jalen Williams down wow. the lane, rejected, and then over the end line went Clowney after the block. Just what I thought Auburn would do out of the halftime. Not settle for a three on their first possession. Run a play to get the ball around the rim. What a defensive erase by Clowney. Two huge blocks in this game for Alabama. Miller had one, Clowney the other. Here's Jalen Williams again on the curl. That oh, time he got what it. an answer. What an answer. 12 points for Jalen Williams here tonight. <laughs> Auburn only has one top five road win in program history. It came in 1988. Another triple. Oh, a cloudy. Jalen Williams down the pipe. Williams drives left and kicked out of bounds. Back-to-back -back threes by Alabama to start the second half. Cannot dare them to shoot at a short closeout when Sears makes the first one. And just enough space for Clowney, who's 6'10", to make a guarded three from the corner. And the intensity again in this building. As heavy as I felt it all year long. Challenge three was an air ball. Alabama has trailed the entire night. Von Quinterly running the point. Miller waits in the corner. Sears for three. Got it! Here's Williams. Back out to Flanagan. Sidelines it in. Man, what an answer by Auburn and Flanagan. I thought Williams missed an opportunity to go for a tough two at the rim. They finally found the kick out. Jalen Williams lost his contact. Two in white. I think that's what they're looking at. Good sign it's a physical game. This yeah. is the game time shot for Bama. A really good action. Jake Hughes gonna back it out. Betty Ako with a ball screen pops out of it. They eat up. Auburn does the middle roll action by Betty Ako, but he finds the backside. Really good ball movement. Betty Ako rolling to score and rolling to pass so far in this game. About as well as you could ask a seven foot. Bama three for three from deep this half. And a pinball's into Auburn and out front to Flanagan. Tonight, Broom. Fouled on the interior by Charles Bediaco. That is the third on Bama's seven footer. Tom, this is how basketball in the month of March is supposed to feel. Got the in-state rivalry. You've got a desperate Auburn team. One big time win away from solidifying their spot in the NCAA tournament. Alabama chasing the overall number one seed in the NCAA. March 1st has delivered so far in this gym.
Flanagan. Bam! Andrew Miller. You have to have the confidence to rise and fire against Alabama and match the confidence that they shoot it with. Auburn has so far. Winner leads to Pediatra. The pace is starting to favor Alabama. Note the score says. That pace now starting to go in the flavor of what Nate Oates wants more of. Bama came into this game number two in the country in tempo. Boom is a lefty. Went over his opposite oh, shoulder. Oh, oh, but the little bit of contact to knock Bediaco back and then the smooth, soft, unrushed delivery by Broom. Then Beautiful. Then he said the seven-footer was too small. Yeah, he did, did he not? Wow. Green commits a foul. <laughs> Again, you've got a ladder waiting outside for Alabama to cut the nets down. And Auburn's saying so far, you have to put that ladder back away. <laughs> Your point. Betty is too small, seven foot with a seven six wingspan. Only in a rivalry. Bama got up to a slow start in this game. But in the second half, they made four out of five to start it. Mismatch Quinterly into Williams. Lost his footing. Go right past him. The kick to the corner. Jimmy Brandon Miller does a great job letting the game come to him. Yep. You get the feeling, though, that he could take this thing over if he wanted to. Yeah, and, and, and needs to, Tom, in his second half. I, mean, I know that Auburn's fighting him like you have to and trying to take away three or four touches per half, but he has got to start cutting hard, demanding the ball. And can Alabama get stops and get this kid involved in the transition run game where he shines? 19.7 points per game, best of the league. Broom off the window. So good. Another play call by Bruce Pearl. Baseline out of bounds under gets the isolation that he wants. And just when it felt like Alabama was starting to roll, Auburn says, not so fast. Well, Alabama shot the ball better in this second half, yet Auburn has extended the lead. Team and one in the SEC, Jimmy, that will cut down the nets. An SEC outright title. If they can pull off the comeback tonight. Auburn's been in a lot of games that they've let yeah. falter late. Bruce Pearl said, I feel like my team's a little fatigued. And to my point, 10 years ago, if I'd have told you that Alabama and Auburn are going to play a basketball game, college game day is going to be there. Alabama's sitting there as one of the top seeds in the country. We would have said, are you sure? But what? the hires of Pearl and Nate Oates have solidified it again. Who wins the pause? Auburn has got their two points. Can Alabama answer coming out of the timeout? It's a 6 nothing Auburn run. Boom with a silly foul 23 feet from the basket. And you've got to find a way to steal some points when you're the underdog. And they get Broom to set that middle ball screen. He, he It's a late roll. He's actually rolling behind the ball. Something we don't see a lot of, but really well done. There's that tough stretch you talked about, Tom. And just win any of those three if you're Auburn. You're in really good spot in Joe Lenardi's bracket and, and more importantly on my jet. But who doesn't want to be on your jet? Not it's a very short list. Sears, turnaround three. And Flanagan yanks it down. Tigers up 10. Their largest lead was 12, and it's rejected by Miller. Impacting the game right now in more ways than just a score Big time block in the first half and another one right there on Katie Johnson but At some point he's gonna have to get rolling offensively Only two field goals for Brandon Miller In the first 25 minutes of game action Jalen Williams tried to spin up Burnett They got it in and they got it off your flex action and Jalen Williams was a ducking guy off, it, off that flex cut that happened. Got him isolated. Miller. Auburn on a 14-2 run. And you get Broom on the rebound. Tom, what's the last basket by Auburn? It comes off of a flex cut. And it's all it ends up is with Jalen Williams going to work. 
and they get him on that spot because he wants to come right shoulder left paw and you get him on that right on that left side it sets him up really well for what he's naturally wired to do Cardwell will re-enter he's got three Broom sits with three Jalen Williams picked up two quick ones early in the game and has been more careful since inside Bediaco and just as I said he was more careful Williams commits his third Go back to Auburn's keys. I talked about when he asked me the question. I said Auburn has to be physical with Alabama. Check that one, yes. Auburn has to get on the offensive glass. They now have six offensive rebounds in the game. Does Auburn check that one, yes. And their get-back defense has to be spectacular. Alabama, points in transition, two. Mm. They are checking all three of the key boxes so far with that 56-44 lead. Moore is holding Betty Aka. In a timeout as Alabama could not get the ball entered, avoided the five second call. Auburn up 12 on the road against the second ranked team in the country. The different areas, a really strong year for this league. And Auburn, with a win right now, they, they are solidly on that jet and store their luggage. No doubt. Only two wins against top two ranked teams in Auburn's history. 1984, Charles Barkley and Chuck Person have played. Sam Bowie, Kenny Walker, and Melvin Turpin. Only one on the road. Here's Sears. You don't see very many briefcases these days. No, you don't. Auburn up by 12. It's an 8 nothing Auburn run. I was working with the great Whip Sanderson years ago. 33 yeah. years on the staff here at Alabama. 13 as the head coach. He walked in to work the game with a briefcase. I thought this must be really important. I watched as he undid the clasp had to unlock the briefcase he worked in for reach in for really important documents he just pulled out a hairbrush and saw a brush in his hair <laughs> and was i fooled a foul out front will go to mark sears his second the wimp like jacket went back home watching it in the birmingham suburbs tonight and you can just just watch the coach's reactions in this game it tells you has a little bit extra juice, a little bit extra heat. The rivalry, what's at stake on both sidelines. Two coaches that are as competitive as anybody in college basketball just burst with pride. One with an orange polo, one dressed to cover the GQ magazine. 1979 GQ magazine, Green's jumper is up. And you get the feeling, Jimmy, not that there's been anything tonight, but... These two sides in a great rivalry really don't care much for each no, other. No, not at all. No, that's, that's how a good rivalry should be. Quinterly. That was halfway down and rimmed out. And Tom, what Alabama has not done in this game like they typically do is win the foot race to the ball on those missed threes. Auburn being very physical. Anytime that shooter rises up, Auburn's not waiting for the ball to be released. They're hitting hard before the ball gets out of the shooter's hand. Those early... Early tags, very important for Auburn in this game when the ball's on the glass. That's 419. Auburn has asked for Bama 14 to 2. Auburn came in a highly efficient two-point shooting defense. Three-point defense has been great tonight as well, but another turnover. 11th of the game for the Tigers. Bediaco, point blank. He is so determined. And disciplined to run every single time. You recruit a big kid at seven feet tall. The first thing you want to ask him: Will you and are you capable of sprinting rim to rim every possession you're on the floor? Bediako says yes. Flanagan off the handoff. Got it. Another 15-foot pull-up shot by Flanagan. I said he's got to have five makes if Auburn's going to win. Halfway there, isn't he? Two, yep. maybe three. Comes right in front of that drop coverage, right? Quinterly back-to-back yeah. -back misses. Is that the best way of, to attack drop coverage? Is from the SEC logo? It certainly is one way. You have to have the courage to take those open 15-foot shots if Betty Ock is going to drop back and give it to you. Mismatch. And Cardwell with the push-off, a missed opportunity. That's his fourth. Tom, watch Betty Ock right here. I mean, he's going to challenge his shot and I watch bam go man lower your head sprint to the rim put pressure on it And right there to finish that play doesn't happen if Betty Ako's lazy for one step He won his first three steps 
I really love the passion this kid plays with. Just keeps the game simple, stars in what he's supposed to do. Sophomore out of Brampton, Ontario. Injured his knee in this matchup last year with Auburn. Jaden Bradley has nowhere to go. And it's stolen away by Williams. KD Johnson forced it. Flanagan to pay it off. It was stay with Auburn. Auburn staying attached, Tom, to shooters when the ball is penetrated. And therefore, they're right there to get a steal and a rip and a run. That would have been a monster finish by Flanagan if he could have gotten it down. Back inside to Williams on Miller. And they get Brandon Miller for the personal foul. That is his second now. Just so good has Bruce Pearl been with his play calls in this game in the half court and the baseline out of bounds under. He's using Williams to throw it in, knowing after you throw it in, just step in and go isolation inside. Keeping it clean, keeping it simple, keeping it effective, keeping it hard to guard. First free throw attempt of the game for Jalen Williams. Comes in at a 75% clip. Another one. We got a Thursday hoops triple header for you. Top 10 of bubble teams abound. First, we start in the Big Ten. Michigan is in Illinois. That's a 7 o'clock matchup. Then Arizona State and West with a take on fourth rank UCLA. And we close it out with another top 10 Pac-12 team. Eighth rank Arizona at USC at 11. All three games on ESPN and the app. Williams one of two from the line. Saw the number one defense in the country last night, Tennessee. Man, the physical size just overwhelms you. Proportions of their game. The UCLA sitting right there behind them as the number two defensive efficiency team in the country on the first day of March. That is Mick Cronin basketball to its core. Here's Clowney. And Broom kept it alive. Push ahead, Katie Johnson. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was one or the other. He was either, oh, no, or, oh, wow. And it ended up, oh, wow. He's got three threes in this game. We said earlier he was identified as the wild card. And if Auburn can get that out of KD Johnson, they're playing with house money. Yes. It's a numbered break, but the numbers favored Alabama. KD Johnson is going to roll the dice and get at just 30 percent it's a nine of 11 nights so far and well that's the blueprint for an upset especially on the road absolutely it is they're two above their average with eight makes they come in making six and if you're alabama you need everything right now those free throws have to drop tonight broom committed his fourth personal foul before he went to break and Brandon Miller goes one of two from the free throw line. That's his first point in the second half. I sat in a film session a couple of weeks ago, and Bruce Pearl reminded his team, we're the team that held Tennessee to 46 points. We're the team defensively that made tight life tough on Alabama when they were here. He believes in his defense, and, man, they've delivered so far in this game. Fifth in the country in three-point defense, yeah. and that is proven tonight. Bama just 24% from deep. Here's Trey Donaldson. Behind Cardwell's screen. And Cardwell, another offensive rebound. Second is possession. Was that the seventh, eighth offensive rebound for Auburn? Bruce Pearl said one of the keys. They continue to storm away. The ninth of the night. Johnson fouled by Griffin. Seventh, eighth, ninth. Yeah, ish. <laughs> ish. <laughs> Griffin commits a foul. That's his first... KD Johnson is one of these players, Jimmy, that it seems to feed off of energy, his or others, but he can take his game to another level the wilder he gets. I, I think that's a great job of you describing this kid. The bigger the stage, the bigger the gamble it is to play him, but man, does it pay off it seems like more times than not, right? Yeah, it, it's like when football coaches say every time our quarterback throws the ball, a band is going to play. Either ours, ours or, or theirs. theirs. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's band is usually playing when Katie Johnson gets involved. SEC Women's Championship on Sunday. You like South Carolina to be one of those teams in the finals? <laughs> the limb is not very long to go out and say that. 
How about Kentucky's fight today? A little scuffle, right? Uh-huh. Quinterly high off the window. That's Eight one. players ejected in green. Yes. Not necessary. Love the intensity, but way out of way out of line. You're gonna throw the ball at somebody, you should hit him. Larry Bird never missed. We got a wedgie from KD after the foul. Second round of the NCC Women's Tournament begins at noon tomorrow. Arkansas Missouri matchup in the 8 9 game. The winner of that one gets a date with the number one team, South Carolina. How about the job that Coach Yo has done at Ole Miss? I mean, she took over that program. They're at the bottom of the SEC. She has them right now as a four seed overall headed to that NCAA tournament. Jim Mulkey at LSU getting it done. That was an impact hire. Didn't lose a game this season no. until they went down to Columbia. Katie Johnson hits the first. Where's Alabama going to find offense? Quinterly kind of saved him against Arkansas in the second half getting downhill. He just made a layup. If you're Auburn, you have to really dial in, I think, on keeping Quinterly out of the lane right now with 10.27 to go. And don't let Brandon Miller squeeze off a three. I think that's primary responsibility number one on the ball with Quinterly. And 24 in red cannot get an open three. They're down 17 here. Alabama trailed against Houston by 15 on the road. Came back and won. They took that game over with about 17 minutes to play. But the threes just aren't there tonight for Bama. Six for 26. What an electric switch out top by Auburn. Because Alabama tried to run a little bit of a screen action to Pop Miller. Auburn would have no part of it. Katie Johnson again. Spins his way free. And now three on the shot clock. Cardwell, quick jump hook and a shot clock violation. Here's that Auburn D I'm talking about, Tom. I mean, Miller's going to try to set a little screening action here and get Auburn confused, but watch what happens. Boom, oh, no. We're switching hot, switching high, pushing Miller out. That's as good as you can do it on that middle ball screen pop action that Alabama runs for Brandon Miller. And one point this half for Miller. Took him almost 11 minutes before he found the scoreboard tonight. And that came from the free throw line. First field goal came with 2.24 to play in the half. Quinterly gets downhill. That's the problem, I'm telling you. That, right now, that's the problem more than Brandon Miller for Auburn. Can you keep Quinterly from getting down between the pipes, get the ball in the glass, and finish it? Donaldson has it taken away by Miller. Brandon Miller never seems rushed. No, Even, he doesn't. Well, he'd make a great NASCAR driver, right? He's so good in traffic. Quinterly got it! 16 for Javon Quinterly. Alabama chipping away at the lead. That's the guy, I'm telling you. An older guard that has had success in March knows what it takes to win. Not shrinking from the moment, embracing the ones. No doubt about it. Hard to guard, right? JQ. Wendell Green Jr. has not made a bucket tonight. He is 0 for 2. Meanwhile, it's been over three minutes since Auburn has made a field goal as a whole. Shot clock getting late in the hands of Katie Johnson. Working on Miller, and he stepped on the sideline. And Auburn turnover. I think this is the best defensive game Brandon Miller has played. Because when he had to switch out there on KD Johnson, the 6'3 guard, he got low, he stayed down, he moved his feet, he put pressure on KD Johnson and got the turnover. See if Bama goes to him on the offensive end. Back off of Bradley, he's a non shooter. Instead, he's able to drive yep. and find Clowney. That's why you back off of him. Why pressure on him and let him turn the corner? Man, if you're Alabama. Play to this crowd right now. Intense. Green with the burst. Bradley's got it. 
to take the lead to single digits. It's Sears. Nine nothing Alabama run. The worst thing Auburn can do here is turn the ball over and give a run out. Taken away by Quinterly, spiked it off the broom. It's Alabama basketball. Tempers starting to flare in Tuscaloosa. Well, the officials need to jump in quick. And that thing was waiting for six or seven seconds to a boiling point. Alabama has left their bench. There's a lot now to work through. Officials are going to look at this. Remember the Colin Sexton game? Alabama. Well, that is an automatic ejection if you leave the bench in a fight situation. Quinterly to the free throw line. 83% on the season. Four for four tonight. It was a very, very heated moment, Tom. You have to wonder, had it, had it occurred on the other end of the floor, would the Auburn players would have been tempted to cross that half-court line? Just how sometimes the coin falls, and you can't handle it any better than what this SEC crew just did. I'm also told, as, as part of all of that, Janai Broom committed his fifth personal foul. So he's done with seven and a half to play. First miss from the line from Quinterly. And here we go. The rest of the story starting with seven and a half minutes to play in this rivalry. Wendell Green went down. Auburn looking for a win to solidify its, stop, its spot in the NCAA tournament. Tigers have lost five of seven. And an air ball from Flanagan. Thought he didn't get the whistle. Alabama will cut down the nets with a win tonight. Tide has never led. And that's a big reason why. Just 7 of 28 from 3. And a big reason in this game as well. Look at Auburn up 31 to 20 on the glass. Not letting Alabama run to those long three-point miss rebounds. Huge story. This is Williams. Stripped by Quinterly. Just ate it up, did he not? Javon Quinterly, man, such a winning player. On both ends. Now he blows got by him. Quinterly's got 19. It's a five-point game. Twelve nothing Alabama run. Winning players make winning plays. Javon Quinterly save two. And a complete mismatch had to fight. Tick smart. Tigers have missed their last four. And Alabama, with Auburn cooling, has heated up. Auburn has been fantastic out of timeouts in this game. They need it again right here. Good recovery by Bradley. Challenge three. Short. Brandon Miller over Cardwell. And an offensive rebound put back by Clowney. One possession game. Donaldson cut off. Ball screen, five on one. Let him try to get downhill for Flanagan. Shot clock of four. Challenge three. Cardwell with the rebound and a whistle underneath. Auburn just not getting good looks right now in this run by Alabama. Not able to answer because of the shot selection. Look at the length of Alabama come into play in this game late. Just over the top is Clowney because Johnson has inside position, but he's 6'3 against Clowney, who's 6'10 with a long wingspan. Another big time play by a freshman. You got three on the floor for Alabama against a rivalry, trying to hold on to an overall one seed, trying to send Auburn home with a loss. You're playing with three freshmen on the floor and an air ball from Cardwell.
Alabama has three freshmen and two old guards, Javon Quinterly and Mark Sears. The freshmen are extremely talented. The guards are talented and old. Here's Miller, top scoring freshman in the game. Most it? scrutinized player in the game and maybe the best player in the game. And he draws a foul from Chris Miller. He's been in double figures in all but one game this season, sitting on nine right now. But the game winner against South Carolina with nine seconds left in overtime. He had tied the game at the buzzer in regulation. That was just two games ago. So good with the ball. And then Auburn has fought their tail off to make this kid work because he came in 52% from the field, 42% from the three, 84% from the line. You love all three of those individually, and certainly collectively. It's the first, got another. Uh, it, it just felt like, to me, an hour before tip, that this is what the game was going to be. You're going to see a desperate fighting effort out of Auburn. You're going to see an Alabama team that just finds a way to win games. And we'll see which one wins out. But, man, are we set for a finish. Have not ran offense yet. Green got a half step on Clowney. Here's Katie Johnson. Wendell Green, smallest on the floor in the interior. I really like the decision by Johnson because Wendell Green gave it up and then stopped in the dunker spot. Was left wide open, which stops a 16-0 run by Alabama. Bradley got deep on Williams. And the rebound is off of Auburn and out of bounds. A.D. Johnson found something. The point guard in that dunker spot. And what it results in, watch Katie Johnson. He steps right in at the dunker spot. Katie Johnson finds him. Seldom you hit your point guard out of the dunker spot, but well done. Sears probing past Flanagan. Got it. Once again, Bama makes it a one-point game. Been a lot of head tap, which is ball screen action in the middle out of Auburn in the last few minutes. If you're using your seat right now in Coleman Coliseum, you're in the minority. Green got no space. Shot clock at four. Williams. More the rebound. 11th offensive rebound for Auburn tonight. There's that head tap again. You will not see two teams fight harder in the whole month of March or two coaches coach harder in the entire month of March on March 1st. Katie Johnson doesn't see the shot clock with one. Got the foul. I said in the first half, it just looked like he had another gear, another speed that he could hit in this game more than anyone else on the floor. That extra speed just got him to the free throw line with 3.19 to go. To try to beat a Tennessee team on Saturday to feel confident going to Nashville. And for Alabama, it's all about not only that regular season title right now, they are chasing what I think is a really good chance to be the overall number one seed in the NCAAs. Huge free throws right now for Katie Johnson. Seventy percent of the season. And that number has dropped in conference play to 61 percent from the line for Katie Johnson. Missed them both. But Chris Moore bails him out with an offensive board. How can Alabama let that happen? And then he's able to draw the foul, and Katie Johnson will go back to the line. Jaden Bradley with his second personal. And Tom, those invisible stats. Now, he's going to get credit for a rebound, but 
Invisible stats is a missed box off by Alabama. Just not physical at all with Clowney, who had inside position, just gets whipped by Chris Moore. And now Katie Johnson right back to the line. Block out the last two, man. Your team needs them. Like a burned defensive back with a short memory. Yes. Katie Johnson has doubled his season scoring average. He's got 17 tonight. Use every bit of the rim before dropping. And we're right back to priority number one is keeping five and red from going downhill. Talking about Quinterly as a layup finisher and not letting Brandon Miller see a clean three. They switch. Here's Miller on Flanagan and got right back to him. Miller trying to take over and he'll get a trip to the line. So good. And Jimmy, this looks like how he looked at the end of the South Carolina yes, game. Yes. You can take away my three ball if you want, Brandon Miller says, and pressure me. And now I've got a counter to it. The pop, they eat it up. But Brandon Miller doesn't hesitate. The catch and rip. He doesn't catch and survey. That's an automatic catch, feel the pressure, rip, get downhill, get to the free throw line. A guy that knows how to impact the game in crunch time is at the line. Brandon Miller's dad, Darrell, played tight end for Gene Stallings here back in the 90s. And despite growing up in Tennessee, he grew up a huge Alabama fan. Alabama bed sheets, Alabama trash can. And Miller now has a dozen. It's a, once again a one-point game. And once again, wow. Green took the bump, fires the three. Huge! three by the littlest man on the floor Quinterly match up with Williams now drive right past him and that is a mismatch all yeah. night they have a chance to go to the line I know where Alabama's strength is but more importantly Alabama knows where it is it's Javon Quinterly downhill I love your description about Window Green with the hit right there and the step back to get himself composed. Didn't rush his shot. And this has been the problem the second half of this game for Auburn. Not able to stay in front of Javon Quinterly. Not only is he getting there, he's finishing at a really high rate. So does that impact what Auburn would do defensively in the last couple of minutes? Or will they continue switching even if it ends up with Quinterly on Williams? Yeah, here's the problem because you cannot come off of Miller you have to stay attached to him and Quinterly is driving to the side of floor Tom where Miller is knowing at least I have an initial opening to try to get into Man what a game Wendell Green got his step hangs and couldn't hit middle of the board Bama looking for its first lead of the night They'll get it and transition a chance for Clowney Wendell Green just not quite the finisher that Javon Quinterly is. And I love the conviction that he drove the ball with, though. And Alabama has not gotten a lot out of their run game. Fast break points, just 10 overall. That's, that's a low number for Alabama on their home floor. And now huge free throws for a freshman in this situation. Foul was the third on Chris Moore. Chance to tie. Now they're coming for Clowney. Auburn led this game by 17 points. When it was 66-49. Auburn should have learned a lesson. The free throw box off right now is crucial. Miller on that left side is a long athlete that just has a way to find the ball. Make it tough on 24 red if there's a miss. But we are tied at 73. And the question continues, where does Auburn go for half-court offense? Wendell Green has the confidence to take the shots. Just a small guard, tough to get him off sometimes. Here's Williams. He's a lefty. Kicks out to Green for three. And the rebound belongs to Bama and Clowney. And a good defensive recovery by Miller with length to bother a small guard from distance. Reminder, it's 73-72 Auburn. And a bump on the drive from Quinterly. 
And that's Flanagan's fourth. You just can't stay in front of him. And Bruce Pearl, I know you're thinking, and I'm with you, that we've got to come off and now start protecting the nails. Cannot let Quinterly continue to get downhill. The, the problem with that is that shooting ability of Sears, Clowney, Miller, when you start coming off early. This is for Alabama's first lead of the night. It is 73 all with 137 to play. And Quinterly gives it to him. 74 73. They're having scoreboard issues in the building. And on our telecast, we apologize for that, but the scoreboard in here says Auburn's got 74 points. Uh, pardon me, Alabama's got 74 points, and Auburn's got none. <laughs> that is what it says right now. Two point Alabama lead. First lead of the game for the tie. Seventy-five, seventy-three, one twenty-five to play in regulation. Alabama up by a deuce. Here's Green. It'll be a ball screen. Can Green get downhill? Shot clock's at seven. Auburn down two. Shot clock at three. Wendell Green on Miller. Alabama the rebound. Three ball Sears. This place would have erupted. He took it early. Gave Auburn a chance now. Flanagan in transition. We're tied again. What an athletic play by Flanagan. What a decision by Green to be patient and let Flanagan sprint where he can catch it and boom, in one big step, get to the rim. It is 75-75 with 45 seconds left to play. Auburn leads for at stake the number one overall national seed and a chance to cut down the nets as SEC champs tonight. Auburn trying to get off the bubble, bubble and secure its spot in March Madness. High wow. percentage look for Connor. They did. All that was really is a decoy by Brandon Miller. Coming off of a pin down, all it did was open up that left side for Bradley to get downhill. And the big guy for Alabama again, a tremendous purposeful roll to the front of the rim. Green in traffic, too strong. Quinterly's got the rebound and a spin move. Four on two, Bama. To Sears for three. Got it! The lead is five. is Alabama confidence right there. Miller jumped the passing lane, but a foul before the pass. And Flanagan will be at the free throw line on a foul on Bradley. Window Green couldn't finish on the other end. And there's that roll by Clowney. Has his hands exposed. The ball doesn't surprise him. Quinley with a spin. This is the confidence I'm talking about. Number break, pull up, release, rotation, big time result out of Sears. Pressure free throws coming for Alan Flanagan. Dad West, an assistant coach on this Auburn staff. Um, Auburn 13 out of 20 from the line, not the percentage that you want on the road in tough games. Lanigan now one for two tonight. Five point lead for Bama in overtime was its largest of the game. Calmly sinks them both. Dane Bradley has not scored a point tonight. Green will slack off him. Here's Miller. Tried to shake more. Wanted the foul and sent a glare to the official. And now Green's on a mismatch with length. Followed his own miss and put it in. They got the mismatch. Window Green, only 5'9", had no chance to keep Miller away. So the second defender, Tom, had to rotate over. What does that do? It frees up that offensive glass. Flanagan for three. Wow. 
How good has Flanagan been in this game? We talked about his mid-range game has to be tremendous. A rise in the pop by him. And an offensive foul will go against Bama. That's charged to Miller. It's his third. And Auburn breaks serve. So you get the mismatch on that little go screen action. Miller's going to get the ball inside, but because of the rotation, the length of Brandon Miller takes over. Man, we've seen that reaction time and time and time again out of both Nate Oates and Bruce Pearl. That was a huge turnover with a two-possession lead. And an offensive foul the other way. I like the communication between Don Daly and KB Burdett. They both blew the whistle. Then Don Daly hesitated and said, I'm going to let the baseline official, who had a good view of it, a push off. Right and, there. Yeah, that, and that's, that, that right Jimmy, that's comes the, up. Sorry, that's the fifth on Flanagan. Tonight, Broome has already fouled out. Flanagan with five points in overtime. Five of his 17. And it'll be Leo Berman who checks into the game. Great chat with Leo at shoot around today. He said, Bruce's trust to play me here in my senior year for being through so much in this program. Gives me great confidence. He's had one huge shot in this game. And now he's guarding Jaden Bradley. Miller guarded by Moore in the paint. Clowney can't get it to him. Quinterly suffocated. And now Bradley gets it for his first bucket of the game. Tom Auburn, they took away Javon Quinterly. They took away Brandon Miller. And the freshman Bradley says, okay, once again. I'm going to lower my head. Just an explosive driving kid. Look at the takeaways right here. And Bradley just has to go make a play. Gets the defender on his back. Williams reaches. What a strong play by a first-year player on the college level. Pressure game, clutch situation. Going away from the basket with a reverse spin. And that is the fifth on Jalen Williams. He's the third Tiger to foul out tonight. can talk all you want about Alabama's threes and they are a very important part of who they are but priority number one has always been since NATO's became the head coach can you keep Alabama from driving the ball it sets up everything else they do on the offensive end and Jimmy it feels like with 246 to play the best offensive threats for Auburn will be Katie Johnson and Wendell Green Jr. Yep. Three-point play for Bradley. You can't let Berman get a three off if you're Alabama. 24 and wide up top. You got to stay attached to him. Eddie Johnson drives. Lost it. And they'll charge Quinterly with his second personal. Good offense for Auburn right now is driving the ball to the side that Berman is at. I know he's not a high volume kid, but everybody knows he can really shoot it. Leor Berman, 60% in conference play from the three. Doesn't take a ton of them. But his gravity ability just might open up some drives for Katie Johnson and Wendell Green. Then the question is, can they finish against the Alabama Link? Missed them both. Now 13 for 22. 15 for 15 for 24. 24. Wow. How about this Auburn going to go? It's like a zone look. First look of zone tonight yeah. from Auburn. That's to keep those guards on the perimeter. If you're Alabama, you still want to stick your nose and drive in those gaps and force the action. Bradley. Over Cardwell at the end of the shot clock. Somebody lost a shoe. Cardwell turned his ankle, oh, man. and they're going to have to stop play. 
And he is seriously injured grabbing his right foot. Auburn basketball. Inbound to Wendell Green Jr. Katie Johnson on Quinterly. Step back three. Huge play by Katie Johnson. Just refusing to go away is Auburn and Katie Johnson. Does Bruce go back to that 2 3 zone? It was good for him. I, I'd stay with it. Miller left open, though. Can't make him pay. But what you've done, you've kept Alabama from driving the ball, which is what they've been doing all their damage. Katie Johnson drives it. Miller blocks it. Sears gets it. Alabama holding on to a two-point lead. And how many times has Auburn's guards had their shots blocked or altered by the length of Alabama in this game? Four blocks for Alabama and probably at least that many shots they've altered. Back to man. Shot clock at six. Miller on Moore. Donaldson jumped on. Shot clock at one. And the rebound is Sears. Under a minute to play. Another offensive rebound. And Auburn whistled for the foul. Yeah, Auburn went man-to-man -man the cut half. Since the break has been the better team. Here's Bradley. To make it a four-point lead. No player and neither team has flinched one time in the last two and a half hours. Not once. Two-possession lead for Alabama. Trying to stay perfect at home. And to cut down the nets tonight. Miller jumps on green. Berman got some space. A little lean in. Chris Moore. A rebound that Auburn had to have to keep their breath in this game. Berman matched up with Miller. Here's the jump. Got him to give it up. And Green fouls Bradley with 17 seconds left on the shot clock. And 22 left in overtime. It'll put Jaden Bradley, the freshman, at the free throw line. He is three for three from the line of this game. And now the rebound is of utmost importance to Auburn. And Auburn is small. And the concern is can you keep 15 in red off the glass if there's a miss? 22 seconds to play. Bama lead is three. Alabama will pick up full court for the first time. Auburn right. didn't see it. They need help. Into Berman. Back to Donaldson. Plenty of time left. Katie Johnson working on Bradley. Down three. Going for two. No whistle on the drive. Here's Bradley. Tried to flush it, and Miller bails him out, and then a foul with six seconds left. That Alabama defense is no joke. I know Auburn has 85. The game's in overtime. But Tom, their ability to recover with recovery length and recovery speed. Watch Johnson drive the ball. And Clowney just meets him right there and throws up a big red wall. Bradley tries to finish it off with a hammer and gets denied. And now Miller, great position to close it out. Brandon Miller with Nina on Saturday, I expect. Six point one seconds remain. It's a two possession lead. Time is not in Auburn's favor. Katie Johnson. Gotta get it off quickly. With one, and that will do it. Alabama holds on in overtime. And a